No, I don't, you don't get to have an answer for this because this is the problem with the Santa Claus 3. No. No, no, what, 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 Rich Evans, what, what's the, what is the answer? Yep, yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, everybody. Oh, here we are. It's that time. It's time for us to do Christmas episodes for Super Fuzz videos, YouTube yeah. thing. And we're going to do this one. And that's it. Never more. No more. Surprise, mother Anyway, welcome to this special episode of Get Real. It's special for a couple of reasons, not, not just because it's a Christmas episode, clearly, but it's also an episode where we kind of do a deep dive into a movie that I feel like has a lot of problems. It's um, a lot of movies. It's, well, yeah, but I mean, it's here's the thing. It's, like, it's a movie that we like. Yeah. But it's a movie that has a lot of issues. So you may be wondering, Hot Toddy, why are you reviewing a movie that is 17 years old? Why are you guys <laughs> doing this? Well, I'll tell you, because- We have nothing better to do. Well, whatever, whatever, I'll do what I want. Well, yeah. no, this is, it's no. a movie that I've wanted to talk about for a few years now. We finally got the opportunity to do so. By the way, I hope you enjoy all the Christmas posters back here, a little Easter eggs. You can uh, pick those out. And, I'm a Christmas uh, sweater. Gotta get a look at that. Gotta get a look at that. That's that's amazing. It's not my gumdrop button. It's it's the it's the gingerbread. It's gingy from gingy. Shrek. And then I'm wearing a hat that is very much uh, that very much has to do with this franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but it's from the second of these movies, Santa Claus Two. So yeah. it does it, and and also it doesn't really work like a good Santa hat. So that's why no, I, he looks like Santa the Pope. That's why I look like Santa Pope. Yeah, Santa Pope. Santa Pope right now. But it's all good because we need to talk about uh, this movie. It's the Santa Claus Three: The Escape Clause. Now, yeah. Miss Pagrino, before we just dive right into it. Um, I want to know what your thought process is on the Santa Claus 3. What Do you like the Santa Claus 3? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can say yes, if you really do. I do. Um, was it necessary? No. That's very true. That's that's kind of what we're going to um, get into. Mm -hmm. I do like it. It does annoy me a little. How so? I, it's just like... Well, first off, I'm mad that Bernard's not in it. That's um, the whole thing. That I, is a whole I feel thing. like Bernard needed to be in it. Yeah. Uh, just because it's Bernard. Okay. But, like, I, I feel like they could have went a different route with it. It's just a constant string of bad luck, and I get it. That's why he wants to not be a Santa anymore. But it was almost too much bad. And that's really, that's that, that's not the ultimate problem with this movie, but it is one of the major problems with this movie. It, it, you hit the nail on the head at the beginning of the episode when you said it was a movie that was not necessary. Yeah. We didn't have to do this. It really was not warranted. But it's a movie that I feel like they kind of rushed through. It was like, we want to make this a trilogy. Uh, escape Clause. That's yeah, what he's that's working on now. That's the best way to do it. Because the first two, I felt like, were very well thought out. The Santa Claus. It's about a guy who uh, puts on the Santa Claus jacket and transitions over a year into becoming Santa Claus. He doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't want to believe that Santa Claus and all of this is real. He doesn't he want to believe in all that. He doesn't want to be this nice person, but he turns into this nice But person. he turns into this great guy in the end yeah. of the movie. And, and then the second one was pretty magical, too. It's like, okay, you've done this, but now... Now, there's another part of this clause and that's the Mrs. Clause mm -hmm. which by the way was the what was the working title for that movie which would have made more sense in this the respect. Mrs. Clause it's the Santa Claus to the Mrs. Clause but then they just shortened it and I think the reason why they did that is because you could you can gather that pretty easily from that movie yeah whereas the escape clause they don't really talk about it that much in the film and you, you might forget what the whole point of the movie was because it's like there's a bunch of different plots there's going so on. Much going on. There's so think? much going on in that movie so they have to call it the escape clause. Um, but yeah, so you, you you know, the Santa Claus, very good movie. Santa Claus 2, solid sequel. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to find a wife and then he finds his wife and then that's, that's the movie. Um, but yeah, the Th Santa Claus 3 was just kind of... It was all, it's all over the place. Shoved in there. It's very much shoved in there. Uh, in that, and, and it doesn't really ever focus, I feel like, wholeheartedly on the on the meat of the movie. It doesn't, well, it, no, it's not the Well, no, because you have the, the baby thing. and the in-laws and the exes and the Jack Frost and then the it, just, just 
Christmas. And it's so convoluted. So much. And of course, you know now they now they have the Santa Claus's the Santa Claus series that's on Disney. Which Plus. I tried to start watching, and I immediately went. Yeah. Oh, never mind. But the Santa Claus Three was supposed to be the final chapter of the Santa Claus series. We now know that it was not. But it just it just because he's got kids. He's got kids, but it was so. like it just it was so it was so like slapped together. It was so shoved in to this that and it's very noticeable because yeah, it even it. seemed different in the sense that like it just seemed disheveled mm -hmm. well that's like, the thing the whole point of the movie is for him to be disheveled but like even the it's like the fake disheveledness translated into the filming of the movie does that make sense what? the movie was too busy and, yeah. and the point you know and again i get back to the title of the movie it's called the escape clause but you don't really get to the escape clause portion of the movie until like the last 15, 20 minutes of the film. That's it. Well, they mention it. They well, mention it a few Jack times. Between Jack and Curtis. And... They mention it a few times yeah. in the movie, but overall it's all about Santa being stressed, the in-laws coming to town, the ex coming to town, and 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 them trying to let. And and again, it's it's mostly about stress, the stress of the so holiday ultimately season. Ultimately, they they built up too long the mm -hmm. reason why he would use the escape clause. That's right. It took it, too long. It was too much of a build up and not enough payoff. The the escape clause was just a tiny portion of the movie. Yeah. When they could have expanded on it so much more, like you know. It, they could have, you know, they could, it could have been like an instantaneous. It could have been like one of the first things that happened in the movie, and the whole film is him, him trying to trying to track down back. Jack Frost yeah. and and get his coat back and do all that. That probably would have made for a better movie. It would have made more for a more interesting movie. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like it just it, it focused too much on the hassle of getting everything ready and all the people that are in the North marital Pole right issues now. of balancing. Exactly. Family and work, and which are real issues. And real I, I, issues. I think that's what they were going for was that they were trying to focus more on, like the normal everyday issues but that people have. But Santa. But but I mean, you want Santa. You want you, it to feel. Santa you, shouldn't feel normal. You Santa wanna, is not normal. You want the movie to feel grounded, though. Yeah. You want it to be more about about the people than it is about you know uh, about Santa and the magical world that he lives in. Y you know, obviously. It's aimed to be because all, all three movies are aimed at that human side. The first one is yeah. aimed at that, you know, you, you're you're somewhat of a of a, of a deadbeat parent, and and you want to. You're all about work. You don't. You're care. all about work. You don't care. And then all of a sudden, there's this great thing that happened that that brought your son and, and you together. And it can be hectic. It can be hectic trying to, you know, make these things happen. But yeah. you, it brought everyone closer together, and this whole thing made that guy a better person. And that was a great message. Second film, it's all about finding love and 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 the complications of starting a relationship because you have a complicated job. I'm Santa Claus. What? No woman is gonna say yes to marriage after two dates. But if you're Santa Claus. They're not gonna do it. If you're Santa Claus, They're that's a different story, bro. No, that's a whole issue in itself. No, bro. If you're Santa Claus, you're saney. It, that's gonna be a whole different story, a whole no. different ballpark. Whatever. Then you get to the third one, and it's all about the stress of balancing all this. Yeah. You decided to take. You, you, you've decided you're gonna be a better person. Well, that comes with new responsibilities. You've gotten married. That comes with new responsibilities. So now everything is kind of caving in on it. Okay. So that should have been the first five minutes. Then he's yeah. like. I don't want to be Santa anymore. And then Jack Frost hears, uh, 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 I got an idea. I got an idea. And, uh, and Here, then, hold this. Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole movie right there. <laughs> right. That's your whole movie. You didn't need Charlie. You didn't need the exes. You didn't need the in-laws. You didn't need any of that. Like, it could have just been them. Everything ha takes place at the North Pole. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, then and then when he goes and does the escape clause, then you can maybe see you can see all these people and you yeah. see everything that's you know, that happened because of what he'd done. Did you fart? That was my shoe on the chair. She farted. That was my shoe on the chair. It, liar! It's Christmas. Your Christmas. Thank you. What? I think I would have preferred. Like you were saying a second ago, if he had immediately gone back within mm -hmm. the first like five, 10 minutes, and then he remembers everything. And so he's literally trying to fight 
to get back mm -hmm. through the whole movie. Like the fight to get back only lasts like ten well, minutes. That, well, that's what I've been saying. That's is what I'm that saying. The, the I escape would prefer that movie. The escape clause part of the movie only takes a few minutes. That's it. Yeah. It only takes up a few minutes of the film. It's like, it's literally like the last twenty minutes, and it's this like is running. okay. Stop being gross. Ew. But yeah, so the the escape clause needed to. What's happening right now? I'm listening. <laughs> Stop it! It was it was literally tacked on to this film. Yeah, it's kind of like the escape clause was an afterthought. It really was. I think yeah. they wanted to do like a whimsical film with like a new. Uh, with a new character, with like a new mythical character, and they were like, well, how do we shoehorn, well, how do we get him in here? I don't know, let's shoehorn a, a, a the thing where he's like, he's jealous of Santa and wants all that Santa has. Yeah. And so they t and so they take him up on that offer and say, like, yeah, all right, let's let's have Martin Thanks Short come in and play Jack Frost. Uh, Not that I don't love Martin Short. I was about you. to say, I was about to say, that's one of the most yeah. uh, positive parts of this movie was the casting. Like, you couldn't have hired better people to play those, the characters that they played in this movie. Martin Short as Jack Frost, that's just smart casting. Maybe if you'd attend a meeting once in a while, you'd know. You can manipulate time, but you can't grow hair. Okay, okay, chill. I invented chill! And then of course- Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where are you going? So, 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 so. So. Suck my toe. No. All the way to Mexico. No. Did this turn into slam poetry? I don't soon? know. <laughs> that still rhymes. Stop. Stop it. An unmitigated disaster. And that's another thing that, that I didn't like about it. And that's another problem is that time travel. It's like time travel is now a part of the, the clause. Time travel have always been a part of the clause. Has it? Yes, because how do you think he makes it around the world? Okay, but I mean, space-time continuum, uh, you know, altering that to get to everybody's houses, that's just normal Santa behavior. Okay? But it's time travel still. That but, is still considered time travel. But no, 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 Time no, travel no, has no, always no, been no, in the no, series. No. Okay. Oh, shit. But does it change the outcome of anything? See, that's what I don't understand about the escape that's clause. butterfly effect. If you're escape clausing, it should be like, okay, and then you take, it's, okay, it's the escape clause. You don't want to be Santa Claus anymore, and they take the powers away. And then the coat is up for grabs. And then Jack Frost either grabs it, or or they have like a, like it's a new, uh, it's like an election at that point. Who will be the new Santa? Uh, conducted, conducted by the other mythical creatures. Mother Nature, Father Time, they like it. And then like, somehow Jack Frost funny. can be, okay, get it. Man, move over and let me pass. Oh, they have to be pulling these hush puppies out your mother the point is, is like, but like Jack Frost weasels his way in somehow, and 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 he corrupts everything, something like that, you know, like. But the fact that it's time travel, and that if he says I don't want to be Santa anymore, like literally the whole world changes, everybody's lives gets altered because well, he because wasn't everybody's Santa Claus lives anymore. Would have been altered if he continued to be a shitty father. It would have gone down that. But path. how self indulgent is that? Like, how self indulgent is that? That the whole world. The whole, the lives of Not everybody. The whole world, his world. Who knows? Listen, we his, his world, world, his world. Yes, but I mean, it could have altered other people. I want, I want this to be more of a cone. It could have altered other people's lives, and we just don't know it because we just see those people. Anybody could've, who could have been affected by him, it's the butterfly effect. But it could. But that's my point. Is it's just it, it it's very odd that the uh, everything and everyone's lives would have been completely readjusted. Had he not become Santa, and it's just bizarre that everybody's I mean, but it, lines becoming there. Santa completely changed him as a person. He he would have been a worse person. You're right, and and, and therefore would have affected a lot more people but, in his life. But Neil and Laura get divorced. Charlie hates Neil. Charlie loves Neil, and as when he's in the first movie, and it, and at the end of the movie, it's like a great thing because he gets two dads. He's like got two dads now that love him. You know, and, and it's it's a great thing. Um, but yeah, like everybody turns on each other just because he didn't say yes to being Santa Claus. It was, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre scenario. So I don't that like really that. Doesn't bother me. I don't like that aspect because it's like, why would the whole world change just because he didn't he didn't put on the coat? 
because he everybody's lives. A different person. It just it feels like Tim Allen wrote that. <laughs> it's like he was like he was the screenwriter of that. Like I want the world to crumble if I don't get to because be because I'm Claude. not Sam. You are a sad, strange little man. That was probably the least part that bothered me. <laughs> well, what bothers you then, Miss Pingrino? Just like. Okay, I'm sorry. When I watch a Santa movie, I don't give a shit about real people problems. I don't. If you want to touch on them here and there, like the first and the second one, where it's just a little bit here and there, like, oh, Charlie, you know, misbehaving in the second one. We go, we fix it, we're done. Uh, him not being a good father in the first one. We've seen it, we've done it, it's done. I like, if I'm going to watch a movie about Santa, it be in the Santa magical realm. I'm not saying you couldn't have a few problems here and there, but I... This is a very stiff hat. It is it, very stiff. That. <laughs> That's what she said! <laughs> this is a Christmas episode, damn it. Too late. Said it. We, we're supposed to be wholesome and family-oriented. What the f***? <laughs> So let me get this Indeed. straight. Let me get this straight, Miss Pingrino. You want a Santa movie where it's all just about the whimsy and the magic? Yeah. Then do I have a Santa movie for you? It's called Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. No, 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 no. no. That movie is nothing but Santa doing his Santa thing, and then he gets kidnapped, and he does his Santa thing on Mars, for God's sakes. He does it all. But all you, on but you Mars. What are you saying? Like all, it's all Santa all the time. Santa Claus conquers the Martians. We got the poster for it right there. We watched it on the Toddcast Live Sadly. a couple years yeah, ago. It's a great movie. Sure. We got it on DVD over there. I mean, my God. But that's, do you, that, but do you so go clearly, on? so what you're saying is, is that Santa Claus conquers the Martians is your fa all time favorite Santa Claus movie of all time. Yeah. That is what you're saying. Surprise, motherfucker. So, my all time favorite movie is The Grinch. The Grinch is a perfect example. It still has a deep message of how presence shouldn't matter, family, friends should matter. But it's still whimsical and crazy and has ridiculous situations that like wouldn't happen in a real life movie. If I want to watch like a real life Christmas movie, I'm going to watch the Hallmark Channel. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> why <I> don't watch <coughs> Those numbers do not, do not <coughs> add up. Who did this to us? We can do a Hallmark Christmas movie right here, right now. I'm business lady. I do business things. I have no time for man. I need to go. I am prince to save the day. No, I need to go to my hometown oh. because my <laughs> dad died or and or is retiring and I have to take over business. Go home to business. Oh, there's man. Man rides horses. I don't like man because he's manly. And then over time, <laughs> I like man. And then we get together. The end. Ta-da. Merry Christmas, everybody. That was an ordeal. Okay, Miss Pingrino, let's get to the main issue. This is the oh. topic. If you've stayed with the video this long, now you're going to know the main problem with this movie. The top issue that I have with this movie. And the second, and the Santa Claus 2. What does Cupid say to Santa when he asks him to hit him with one of his called darts? Oh, it doesn't work on other mythical people. Second of all, no can do. Why not? Because the arrows have no effect on us. And at the very end of this movie, what does Mother Nature say when, he, when Santa asks to unthaw Laura and Neil? I'm sorry, Santa. Her powers don't work on other legendary figures. Her Forget powers yes. don't work on other mythical creatures. Right. How the hell does Jack Frost become Santa Claus? And for one brief, beautiful second, Hot Toddy thought that he had made the ultimate point, the greatest point to ever be pointed out on an episode of Get Real and maybe an internet movie review history. But alas, it was not to be, as Miss Pingrino had a rebuttal all loaded up and ready to discharge. That sounded dirty, I know, but it is the truth. And now, all good things must come to an end, and Hot Toddy's world is about to shatter. Because don't, it has don't, no don't answer the question. That is rhetorical. No, I don't. You don't get to have an answer for this because this is the problem with the Santa Claus Three. No. 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 What? 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 Rich Evans. What? What's the? What is the answer? What? <laughs> because it has nothing to do with a gift working on. What? A mythical creature. <laughs> you're just you're just using words. What? 
No. Gift on something. Gift, the Cupid's gift can't be used on Santa. Mother Nature's gift can't be used on Jack Frost. Santa's gift can't be used on Jack Frost. It's not Santa's gift. It's a clause in his contract. But it's it's it still wouldn't affect the mythical creatures. They, they would not work on Jack Frost. It is a clause in his contract. No! It is not one of his abilities. Oh my God. How can I convince you of this? Okay. <laughs> You're not going to. Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. How, how are you not understanding this? How are you not understanding this? Okay. It is not an actual gift. It is. It is a clause. But. But no. Yeah, it's Mr. not Grino, a part. No. Yes, it's not a part of Santa's gifts. It's not a part of his magical ability. But it, you can't. But like, if if Cupid put on the jacket, or if the Easter Bunny put on the jacket, they wouldn't become Santa because they are mythical, other mythical creatures. They have their own myth, mythical myth, mythos that they have. No, they could. They could not become the, Santa Claus. No, no, the, this is, this is, both. this is slander. Is not. No. <laughs> bullshit. Total <laughs> bullshit. This is not real. This is not happening. You are not going to sit there and defend this part of the movie under my roof and on my YouTube channel, you're not doing it. That is the dumbest thing about the movie. He should not have become Santa because he is a fellow mythical creature who cannot gain the powers of another mythical creature that completely breaks the rules of those movies. No, 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 no! No, Miss Pingrino, it doesn't make sense. Stop debating. There is no debate. You've completely ruined this episode for me. It doesn't make any sense. This wasn't this wasn't a debate. This whole episode was about pointing out the problems with this movie, and I just did that. That's why the whole episode is called The Problem with the Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Why? 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 Are you done? That's a lot of information to get in 30 seconds. <laughs> the powers are not being used on Jack Frost. Yes, they are. They're, they're and it never said that you couldn't absorb somebody else's powers. It just said the powers couldn't be used on you. And so you can't put the jacket on and become Santa if you're already a mythical creature. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Okay. Like, Santa could not become Mother Nature. Mother Nature doesn't have something to make her Mother Nature. Mother Nature is born a creature. So you're telling me Santa is the only one that has the decision to become a mythical creature? Yes. That makes no sense. That's the dumbest thing. He had the decision to be Santa or not. To put on the coat or not. Okay, but even if that's the case, if he's the only one with the decision of becoming a mythical so creature. So whoever holds the coat has the decision to become that. Other mythical creatures could not do that. That wasn't said. It was said in two movies! The arrows have no effect on us. Our powers don't work on other legendary figures. It was not. It was that the gifts of another magical creature could not be used. Santa is not a magical creature till he becomes Santa. His coat is not a magical creature. His coat is a magical item. I bet you think COVID is fake, don't you? I bet you think no, the world is flat. Twice. I bet you think the world is flat, don't you? No, you are, but what am I? I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm sitting here spitting logic and you're coming in hot with rebuttals that are bull. No, I'm not. Bull rebuttals. The coat is not a mythical being, okay? It is a mythical item. Therefore, its magic has no effect on whether the person putting it on is a normal human being or a mythical human being. It does not matter because it is not a mythical human being. What Cupid and Mother Nature said is that their mythical powers as a human being could not be used on another. Their human, their, their mythical powers, the, their bodies could not be used. And the magic has been drained out of me. Thanks for watching. Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause. Ho, ho, ho. Well, thank you, Miss Pingrino. That was great. It was great. So that that's the problem with <laughs> the Santa Claus Three the Escape Clause. No matter what I say, I'm always wrong. You're not. <laughs>
Why am I always the bad guy? <laughs> Okay, bye. You're just going to have to sit there with your awkwardness now. <laughs> I'm not touching anything. <laughs>